So in today's video, we're gonna look at the brand new Galaxy Tab A 8.4 inch tablet, which was just released for 2020. And this is the Verizon version with 32 gigabytes of storage. And the color is called Mocha. The resolution on this one is 1920 by 1080. And this has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So we'll definitely have to test that out. It's got a five megapixel front facing camera, eight megapixel rear facing camera. It's got three gigs of RAM. This one does have a pre-installed SIM card you can use with Verizon. And it takes a micro SD card up to 512 gigabytes. And as far as Wi-Fi goes, this does have 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. It's got Bluetooth 5.0, and the good thing is it does have a headphone jack. Now, unfortunately, this isn't AMOLED display, it's just TFT, but it is 1920 by 1200 resolution. You're gonna get USB-C charging with this one, so that's definitely good to see. USB charging brick. Ejection tool for the SIM and micro SD card. User manual and warranty information. Okay, so the mocha color, I don't know, that sort of looks like a charcoal or a dark gray. And you can see the Verizon logo on the back. And up there in the corner is your eight megapixel rear facing camera, headphone jack and microphone there on the top, micro SD card and SIM tray there on the side, power and volume buttons up on the right hand side. So on the back, it actually looks like metal but I'm pretty sure it's just plastic. So currently this is on Android 9, but I'm pretty sure this is gonna get an update to Android 10 soon. It's also on security patch January 1st, 2020, but I'm pretty sure that's gonna get updated as well, considering some of my older Samsung tablets have. So it's currently using 12.7 gigabytes of the 32 gig available. I imagine that's even gonna be less space once I download some games and other apps that I normally use. First off, it looks like there's some updates, so I'm gonna go ahead and update everything, download all of my apps, and then come back and show you what some of this looks like. So for a quick size comparison, you can see the cheaper Galaxy Tab A 8.0 is just a little bit taller with the bezels on the top and bottom being larger. And then you can see the Galaxy Tab A 8.0 with S Pen is pretty much the same exact size. However, the 8.4 is a little bit thinner than both of these tablets. First thing I'm gonna do is switch the button order. I just like to have those switched around more like stock Android. Lock screen options on this one, you get swipe, pattern, pin, password, or you can decide to have none. And then you also get face unlock. Like a lot of other Samsung products, when you swipe to the left, you're gonna get your Bixby, newsfeed, and a lot of other stuff you can customize. Inside the camera app, it's gonna be fairly similar to other Samsung products. Now it only has one rear facing camera, but it does have where you can zoom in two times. You can also change the aspect ratio from 4.3 to 16 by nine to one by one or to the full screen ratio. This does have HDR, different camera modes it has is food, panorama, pro, live focus, and it also has 1920 by 1080p. Resolution for video on the rear camera is 1920 by 1080. And same thing for the front camera. The rear camera on this actually isn't that bad. I mean, you gotta remember, this is considered a budget tablet. Here's a few more examples, just to give you an idea of what they look like. So if you're gonna use this camera indoors, it's definitely gonna struggle more than if you're outside on a nice sunny day. But I'm not really sure how much people use their tablet cameras anyways. Maybe a lot more now, considering a lot of people are working from home using apps like Zoom. I just wanted to show you the kind of quality you get for your money. And here's a couple samples of the front and rear facing cameras for a video, just to give you an idea of what those look like as well.
And yes, this does have split screen. If you go to recent apps, hold down on one of the icons, and then just say open and split screen. Then you just pick another app. Below with current pricing and more information on each of these keyboards. So even though this only has two speakers down at the bottom, in person they're actually louder than what I expected. Here's a quick sample just so you can see what it sounds like. You can see they at least put little rubber pads here at the end so at least your iPad isn't hitting against the aluminum keyboard. And this does have the auto sleep and wake function. Now, if you remember how I said earlier, a lot of these are top heavy. Well, you definitely don't have to worry about this being top heavy since the... The good thing is it plays in full HD, whether you're playing videos on YouTube or Netflix. So in the notifications, you got some shortcuts here for smart view blue light filter, tablet visibility, and Dolby Atmos. Unfortunately, you don't get Samsung DeX on this one. So it's got two ARM Cortex-A73s at 1.77, then it's got six ARM Cortex-A53 processors at 1.59 gigahertz. Okay, so Wi-Fi speeds aren't bad at 100 megabits per second. So when testing this tablet out with games, it actually did really good. One of the best tests for tablets is Asphalt 9, since I've actually seen some other cheap tablets struggle with this game. But no problems with this game either. It ran nice and smooth with no choppiness, because to me it's always more fun playing games on a tablet versus a phone because of the bigger screen. Graphic settings on PUBG Mobile were balanced with medium frame rate. Here's a few clips just to show you how it played. I don't think it ever got choppy or looked bad compared to other tablets that I've played this game on, so that's definitely good. Now the graphics quality for Call of Duty Mobile was at the lowest setting with medium frame rates, but you have to remember this game is really well optimized for mobile devices, so I had no problems playing this game and was really smooth as well. I did a battery drain test on this tablet with screen brightness at 100% while streaming video. It lasted a little over six and a half hours, just under seven hours really, which is okay I guess for this size of battery. Then when charging it back up from zero to 100%, it took about three hours total. So overall, I really like this new 8.4 inch version. Although I have to admit, I thought it would be a little bigger. The screen on it is really nice with good viewing angles. The battery life is decent. No problems with playing games or watching videos at HD resolution. Having said that though, it's sort of hard to recommend this tablet at almost $300 when you can get the cheaper 8 inch version for about half of the cost. Or even the larger 10.1 inch version for the same price or cheaper. 
So if you've made it this far into the video, you may want to say thanks by subscribing and don't forget to give a thumbs up if this video was helpful. This is Brian from Fishbee Productions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.